Here is a very classic problem when we deal with Snell's law and index of refraction and light refracting through a medium. In this case, we have what we call a glass prism. The angles of the prism are 60 by 60 by 60, so it's an equi equilateral prism, same sides, same angles. And notice that the angle of incidence of the beam of light is at an angle of 40 degrees relative to the normal of the surface. Notice it's 10 degrees below the horizontal, but since the normal is at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal, this then becomes a 40 degree angle. So that's the angle of incidence being 40 degrees. Now what we're trying to do is find out how the light will proceed through the prism and out the prism. The question is, what is the final angle? And so we can say that theta sub 4 is equal to question mark, the angle of the angle of the refracted light as it leaves the prism on the other side. Remember how I use the indices? This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Even though uh, 2 and 3 are within the same medium, it just makes it easier to follow. So we have on the left side of the first boundary is 1, on the right side it's 2, on the left side of the second boundary is 3, on the right side is 4, and that's how we keep track of it. So what's the angle as it leaves the prism on the other side relative to the prism or relative to the horizontal? All right. So, how do we do that? Well, first we try to figure out the angle of refraction across this boundary right here. And so, not quite sure if this refracted light will go down or be, be uh, horizontal or go up. We don't know, so let's just calculate what it is. So, we use Snell's law. We say N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2 sine of theta 2. And so, what we're trying to find here, of course, is we're trying to find out what theta 2 is, which is the refracted light across the first boundary. So solving for, for theta 2, we write sine of theta sub 2 is equal to the left side of the equation, which is n1 sine of theta 1, and I divide by the coefficient of sine of theta 2, so I take the coefficient, what I did was I turn the equation around, take the n2, put it down here, like that, and now we can solve for theta sub 2, which is equal to the arc sine of n1 sine of theta 1 divided by n2. All right, now plug in the numbers and see what we get. So this is equal to the arc sine of n1, which is, well, let's call this n1, and let's call this n2, that's across the boundary, so n1 is 1. The sine of theta 1, which is the sine of 40 degrees, and we divide it by n2, which is 1.56. There we go. So what is the arc sine of that? Let's find out. So we have 40 degrees, take the sine, divide by 1.56, and we get 0.41, take the arc sine of that, which is 24.3 degrees. So, so we have theta sub 2, which is equal to 24.3 degrees. That's this angle right here, 24.3 degrees. Now, if I draw this line this way, I know that this angle right here must be a 30 degree angle. Right? How do I know that's a 30 degree angle? Well, notice that this side right here, this being tilted 30 degrees from the vertical, which means that the normal, if this was here, the normal will be tilted 30 degrees this way, and that means that this normal here will be 30 degrees below the normal, uh, below the horizontal right there. So that's correct. And since the angle of refraction is only 24.3 degrees, that, which uh, means light will then be refracted below the horizontal like that. Uh, let me draw that. Let me draw that line just slightly better. There we go. If this is a horizontal. And that's 30 degrees and 24 degrees must be something like that. That's a little better. I want a little bit more of a, some space up there. So that would be the refracted beam, which will then hit the southern side like this. Okay, so we know that the refracted beam makes an angle of 24.3 degrees with the uh, normal. So this is 24.3 degrees, and that is, of course, theta sub 2 is equal to that, which means this angle right here below the horizontal if I continue with that angle right there. So this angle must be 30 minus 24.3 or 5.7 degrees. So that's the angle between the horizontal and the refracted beam. Refracted beam will travel in this direction. All right, that's important to know. So now we reach the other side. So let's draw the normal where the light beam hits the other side right there, like so. And so now we have to establish what this angle is right here. What is that angle equal to? So again, the way to find that is, let's draw a line, and let me use a different color. Uh, here's my red pen right there. So let me draw the horizontal line at the point where the beam hits the side, like that. 
So since this is 5.7 degrees, we know that this must be 5.7 degrees as well. All right, so those are the alternate interior angles. So 5.7 degrees, 5.7 degrees. We need to establish what this angle is here. I'm going to call that theta sub three. That's the incident angle to the boundary. So let's call that theta sub three, theta sub three. And what is theta sub three equal to? Well, we know that this angle between this normal and that horizontal, that must be 30 degrees. And then if we add another 5.7 degrees to that, we know that the angle of incidence here is, whoop, got a little ahead of myself. That must therefore be 35.7 degrees. So that's 30 degrees plus the 5.7 degrees. That's the angle of incidence as the beam reaches the other side. Again, how do we know that? Notice the normal here. The angle between the normal and the horizontal has to be 30 degrees because this is 60 degrees. Notice that this, if we bring this straight up, then there would be the same angle. So since this is 30 degrees, we tilt this 30 degrees, that means this has to come up 30 degrees. So this is 30, this is 30 at the 5.7. That's your incident angle of 35.7 degrees. All right, that allows us to find the exiting uh, beam, the angle between the normal and the exiting beam on the other side, theta sub four. So we assume that it's going to bend away from the normal like this. Now we're looking for theta sub four, which is what we're looking for there. So we have N3 sine of theta three equals N4 sine of theta sub four. So N3 is on this side of the boundary, four is on that side of the boundary. So there we can say that N4 is equal to one, we're back in the air. N3 is equal to 1.56, which is the same as N2 because you're inside the same medium. So let's, and what we're looking for is we're looking for sine of theta four, so we can solve for theta sub four. So sine of theta sub four is equal to the left side of the equation, N3 sine of theta three divided by the coefficient N4, so that theta sub four is equal to the arc sine of N3 sine of theta sub three divided by N sub four. All we have to do is plug in the numbers and we can find out what that fourth angle is. So theta sub four is equal to the arc sine of N3, which is 1.56, sine of theta sub three, which we found to be 35.7 degrees, divided by N4, which is the index of refraction outside the medium, which is one. And now with the calculator, we'll figure out what that angle is. So 35.7, take the sine of that, times 1.56, which is 0 0.91, and then we take the arc sine of that, and we get 65.6 degrees. So this is equal to 65.6 degrees, and remember that's with, in relationship to the normal or the vertical relative to the, to the um, side of the prism right there. So we can say that this is equal to 65.6 degrees, which means, therefore, since this angle is 30 degrees, and this whole angle is 65.6 degrees, that this remaining angle, this angle here, is equal to 65.6 degrees minus the 30 degrees over there, which is equal to 35.6 degrees, and that would then be below the horizontal. So you can see then that the exiting beam will be in a direction 35.6 degrees below the horizontal as it moves out of the side of the prism. Here's a very classic problem. It's normally fairly hard for students to figure out, especially the angles inside here. So let's go through it again one more time. We have an incident beam 10 degrees below the horizontal, which makes it 40 degrees relative to the normal of this boundary. So we know that the incident angle, theta sub one, should be 40 degrees, right there. We wanna know what the angle is across the boundary because the light will be refracted. Using Snell's law, we solve for theta sub two, and we found that theta sub two is 24.3 degrees, relative to the normal, to the plane of the boundary right there. Since we know that the angle between the normal and the horizontal is 30 degrees, and the angle of, of uh, refraction is only 24.3 degrees, then we know that the refracted light should be slightly below the horizontal. We can calculate the angle between 5.7 degrees, which means that as the beam comes in, the beam will come in at an angle of 5.7 degrees above the horizontal on the other side of the prism. Okay, knowing that the angle between the horizontal and the perpendicular to the surface is 30 degrees, add another 5.7, that gives us an incident angle of 35.7 degrees, which we call theta sub three, which is now at the other, other boundary. 
And therefore, we, we then calculate theta sub 4, which is the refracted angle, using Snell's law again. So theta sub 4 comes out to be 65.6 degrees, knowing that that's relative to the vertical or perpendicular or normal to the surface. If we subtract 30 degrees from that, because we know that the normal and the horizontal, the difference there is 30 degrees, so 65.6 degrees minus 30 gives us the angle relative to the horizontal, which is this angle right there. So the answer for theta sub 4, it's 65.6 degrees relative to the horizontal, we're 35.6 degrees below the horizontal. And that's how you do a problem like that.